hello everyone in this video we are going to discuss about a for each method on array so actually for each is a method that you can use it on array to manipulate the existing array and it's quite faster when compared to a conventional for loop and this for each method return null and that is what we are going to explore in the last two video we have discussed about a one dimensional array and two dimensional array and how you can modify or manipulate the data out of that so if you haven't watched those videos I just check out that and let's begin so this is very simple function and the function name is a for each it contains two array array one contains some set of fruits in the form of array and array two is another array object that contains another set of fruits so let's see how to use a simple for each loop first then we can explore more about the arguments that present on this for each loop so I want to iterate this array one so let's see how to use that for each so you, here you can see that this for each method accept one argument functional callback and it also accepts two argument function callback as well as uh, this org. So let's explore one by one. So in the callback, you have to create a function, and that function should execute depending upon the number of elements or number of objects present on your array. Let me explain that. So first we will create a function because this is a callback function. So we are going to create a function and it's going to accept an element. So this for each take care of iteration internally. So when you put element here, so this is not particularly element. You can put any variable as you want. So what happens means, let's say here we are having three fruits. So in each iteration, one fruit will be passed here and whatever the logic that you have written it will manipulate and update the results so during each iteration here it's going to iterate for three times because we have a three fruits so this will take care of iteration this for each method will take care of iteration and so here we cannot close and we can close the parenthesis here so let me print what we are getting so that you will get a clear picture of what exactly is happening so during the first iteration it will print mango and second iteration banana and third iteration orange this is what it should print but let's see so here you go so this method is just take care of iteration internally and this element will the value of the element will get updated during each iteration with the fruit name one by one <clears throat> so this function accept two more argument as well so first one is an element individual element will go here during each iteration and the next one is a index of the element so for example during a very first iteration mango Will be passed to this element and in the index it will be zero because array index always starts with zero and it accept one more argument and the name of the argument is a array object so here you can pass this array object and you can modify the array using this for each loop but so let's discuss about this one later so let me print the element and index first okay so let's execute and see so if you see here mango lies on the index 0 banana 1 and orange 2 so this is how the one dimensional for each works so let's work on two dimensional for loop so here we are having some data so here you can see that it contains a serial number and just assume that it's an employee name and this is an age. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this range in the form of two dimensional array that we have already discussed in the last video. So this 
line will do that so basically it go and access the sheet one and from the first row first column it take up to fourth row of third column fourth row of third column so this will return the entire range as a two dimensional array and this get values take care of uh, storing that in a two dimensional array so we are going to iterate this so i want the name of the employee the title should be added before the name of the employee and we are going to increase the age by adding plus two so let's see how to do that so for that i'm going to create an empty array let's say the name of the array is a copy and it's an array so i, I symbolize that with this empty array and i'm going to apply the for each on this range and the, this range so I can access this range from this array I'm just replacing that dot for each function element comma index and this is going to print the element and each element in this range is also an array so if you see if I print logger dot log of rng then you will get to know how it gets stored in the computer memory so go to view logs and if you see here this is an array and inside the array it contain number of uh, sub arrays so it's actually we call it as a two dimensional array let's see how to do the modification that we want so i want this modification to get stored on this copy array so copy dot push so this one i have explained in the previous video what push does it is just push this value to the existing array so if you haven't watched that video you can go and watch that video so here we are going to push an array so we have to put that inside a square bracket and the very first element we are not going to do any change so let's keep that as element zero and this one we are going to add the title in front of employee name let's add the title let's say mr plus element of one so during each iteration it will append the mr string in front of the employee name and we need to add two years to the existing age of the employee so element of 2 plus 2 so that's it if you print or ng this is range and the copy array then you will get the difference then you will notice the difference very clearly let me execute that so if you see here this is the range value that we are getting straight from this range this doesn't contain a title and the um, age still remains the same but this is the value print from our copy array if you see here the mr title get added to each employee in the array and the age is also increased by two years so this is how you can work on two dimensional array so let's suppose you don't want to go with copy and you want this range to get updated with this copy array then let's see how to do that in this case you have to use the array object so this argument just pass this array directly to this so you are just accessing this or ng array using this parameter array object so what you can do here is just take out this push and you're going to update each index of this or ng with updated value so array is nothing but rng and we know the index using this parameter so let's combine and make use of that that's it 
so this array of index is going to update these changes and this copy is going to be undefined so I will print orange G let's say before and after Guru view logs if you see here it's before 1 John 22 and in the after this the title get appended to each employee and this age also get increased by two years for each employee so this is how you can modify the existing range with updated value using a forage function so let's see how to assign that back to the Google spreadsheet itself so I want to access the sheet one so I just copied up to that and get range I want to get the range I want to print the updated value starting from the row 5 so it should go and access row 5 and the column it should take the first column so I'm not going to alter that and number of rows here you have to specify I can make use of this array to find the length for me so this array dot length will return the number of uh, rows and to find the number of columns this is zero dot length will take care of that and you have to use one more method called set values which accept a two dimensional array and here you need to pass a two dimensional array that you want to set on the Google sheet so let's execute and if you go here okay set value we need to set the value of orange if you go here you can see the changes the title gets added and the age is also increased by two so this is how you can effectively use a forage function to manipulate the existing data and in the next video we will see about a map filter and reduce option in the upcoming videos so if you like this video give thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye take care